card. Please remember our toll-free hotline, 1-800-555-5555. The lines are already abuzz, so let me not keep them any longer. Hello, first caller, and welcome to Community Beat. Good morning. Thanks for having me on the program. I'm just bubbling over with joy because of what this station has done for me. I feel like singing. Can I share a song and scripture with you and ask you that you read and read with me? Sing and read with me. Please turn your hymnals with me to him, trees. 36373 seeking the lost. Please turn your hymn now. To him number 373. Seeking the lost, yes, kindly and treated. Wander us on the mountain of strength. Let's go again. Seeking the lost, yes, kindly and treating. Wander us on the mountains of strength. Come on to me, his message repeating. Wander us on the mountain today, going afar, going afar, afar upon the mountain, bringing the war, bringing the wonders, wonders back again into the fold. Into the fold, the fold of my Redeemer, Jesus the Lamb. Jesus the Lamb, the Lamb for sinners slain. Seeking the lost and pointing to Jesus, so that we can hearts that are sore. Leading them forth in ways of salvation, showing the path to life evermore. Going afar, going afar, afar upon the mountain, bringing the one, bringing the wonders, wonders back again. Into the fold, into the fold, the fold of my Redeemer, Jesus the Lamb. Jesus the Lamb, the Lamb for sinners slain. Thus I would go on missions of mercy, following Christ from day unto day. Sharing the fainted, raising the fallen, pointing the lost to Jesus the way. Going afar, going afar, afar upon the mountain, bringing the one, bringing the wonders, wonders back again. Into the fold, into the fold, the fold of my redeemed, Jesus the Lamb, Jesus the Lamb, the Lamb for sinners slain. And our scripture reading comes from Romans 15, verse 7. A 
And I will read in your hearing. Wherefore, receive ye no other, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Amen. Okay. A pleasure to be in your program. I'm calling because I want some information about this team for today. What do you mean by reaching up and reaching out? I'm sure many of, our, of your other viewers would also love to know. The theme reaching up and reaching out is derived from reaching up to God, then reaching out to persons. In reaching up, we must seek guidance from God in witnessing and then we will be equipped to reach out to dying souls. As the songwriter says, rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Snatch them in pity from sin and the grave. This highlights the, the great importance of rescuing or seeking the lost. We must also embrace the gospel commission found in Matthew 28 to go, reach out, teach, and continue to teach. Many persons in the world are yet to hear about who God is. Hence, as a church, we have a great duty to accomplish in reaching out. Ellen White writes in the book Evangelism, we should make efforts to call together large congregations to hear the words of the gospel minister. And those who preach the word of the Lord should speak the truth. They should bring their hearers, as it were, to the foot of Sinai, to listen to the words spoken by God amid scenes of awful grandeur. The method that we choose in reaching out is also critically important. The method that will bring the most success is Christ's method. Ellen G. White outlines this method in her book, The Ministry of Healing, page 143. Christ's method alone with gift Christ's method alone will give true success in reaching the people. The Savior mingled with men as one who desired their good. He showed his sympathy for them, ministered to their needs, and won their confidence. Then he bade them, follow me. If we are serious about reaching souls for Christ, we must first minister to the social, physical, and emotional needs of people. Then, once we have won their confidence, lead them to Christ, who will work on their hearts. It's now time for our roving report. Our feed reporter, Sister Mo Morrison, is in the streets with a bubbly set of young people. What's your story today? Have you been reaching up and reaching across? Let's listen in. Over to you. about our gospel healing, right? It starts this weekend and it ends in April. It's about something. Yes. Oh, I got you to Yes. Yeah. Thank you. The youths this morning, we are on the road to letting persons know that God is still indeed alive and well in our neck of the woods. And here we are as young people doing what we can to spread the message. Stadcom TV is always blessed to have live music. On location this morning is AMF. Let's hear some live music, which will lead right into our hot topic. And you don't 
want to miss this topic for today, Desires of Nations. Join our veteran broadcaster, David Bromfield, immediately following this live musical feast. Stay tuned. It seems we're having some te technical difficulties with the AMF group, so we'll move straight into our lesson study. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Happy Sabbath. Studio again in a silent on me. Happy Sabbath. I see waving. I get happy Sabbath from the musician. Yes, yes. Thank you, Brother QL. Right. So today's lesson review. I know it is a review. It is not a it is not a story. It is not a, 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 you're not just going to go and read it over and over again. All right, so I am what, all right, here's what we are going to do today. I'm just going to introduce the topic. We're going to pray, allow AMF to come and sing their song, then I will begin, all right? So the topic for t the lesson is lesson 12, and uh, the topic is desire of nations, desire of nations. Now, just think about the topic, desire of nations, yes, sir, John, I'm and what it means with regards to this lesson okay right just think about it and uh, while you think about it i'm going to ask amf amf to sing that song for us right as i am told that they are here so can they just sing that song while we <laughs> think about the topic Once I was clothed in the rags of my sin, wretched and poor, lost and lonely within, but with one just compassion, the King of all kings, infinite in love, took me under his wings. Oh yes, oh yes, I'm a child of the King, his royal blood now flows in God, who was wretched and poor, now can sing, praise God, praise God, I'm a child of the King. Now I'm a child with a heavenly home, my holy Father, He made me. And I'm washed by his blood, and I'm clothed in his love. And someday I'll sing with the angels above. 
Um, David, you would need to unmute the microphone. My mic. Comment. Beautiful My singing. Mic. Amen. Thank you, Amy, for that song. And that song actually fit in with the lesson for today. Now, I will just go right into it because we don't have much time, right? Okay, so the memory verse is, yes, the memory verse. The Gentiles shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. And it's just happened that some brightness just slapped me right now, right? <laughs> right, so the abstract, it's on the Sabbath afternoon, Sabbath afternoon's aspect of the lesson, right? And it reads, we must learn in the school of Christ. Nothing but his righteousness can entitle us to one of the blessings of the covenant of grace. We long desired and tried to obtain these blessings, but have not received them because we have cherished the idea that we could do something to make ourselves worthy of them. We have not looked away from ourselves, believing that Jesus is a living Savior. We must not think that our own grace and merits will save us. The grace of Christ is our only hope of salvation. Through his prophet, the Lord promises in Isaiah 55 verse 7, and it reads, Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts, let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. We must believe the naked promise and not accepting feeling for faith. When we trust God fully, when we, when we rely upon the merits of Jesus as a sin pardoning Savior, we shall receive all the help that we can desire. And that is a quote. This paragraph is a quote from Ellen G. White, Faith and Works, page 36. Now, this abstract sets the tone for the lesson. Yes, it sets the tone for the lesson review. Now, Sunday, we go into Sunday. Sunday says, Sunday's topic is the effects of sin. Now, I'm going to ask someone, right? Someone to just read Isaiah 58, verse 3. I'm going to try my best to make this session as interactive as I possibly can, right? So, someone in someone, just raise your hand and you will be acknowledged with the reading of Isaiah 58, verse 3. 
3, Isaiah 58, verse 3. And if anyone in the studio, someone in the studio would like to speak, so I'm not sure if a mic could be given to that individual. Right, with Isaiah 58, verse 3. Verse 3 Wherefore have we fasted? Say, say they that thou seest not. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul? And thou takest no knowledge. Behold, and behold, in the day of your fast, we find pleasure and exact all our labors. Okay, that's Isaiah 58 and verse 3. Right. So it says, Yes, so I'm reading from the New King James Version and it reads, We have fasted, they say, and you have not seen. Why have we, why have we afflicted our souls and yet take no notice? No, with a question like this, it's like God's, uh, God's people were saying, God, we have fasted, but you still don't answer our prayers. Don't you know that we seek you daily, delight to know your ways, do righteous, and, and are joyous in approaching? You, yet, you do not answer our prayers. No, somebody else, somebody else, whether on the stream or in here, can you please read Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2? Isaiah 59, verses 1 and 2. Anyone? Whether on Zoom, just raise your hand and we'll acknowledge you. Isaiah 59, and verses 1 and 2. All right, I got one individual, go ahead. Behold, yes. the Lord and is not shortened that it cannot save, neither is ears heavy that it cannot hear. All right, stop right there. Now, what is God telling us right here? What, what, what is this scripture saying to us? Whether in the chat, whether, whether elsewhere in the studio, what is God saying, just verse one? Yes, brother. He is saying to us basically there is no amount of problem that we can have that will burn his ear from hearing us. Yes. So as he said, he encourages us to come to him boldly, yes. present our issues to him right. as he is there. Okay, wonderful. But there's one more thing. God has the ability to save. The scripture shows that God has the ability to save. Remember, God's hand is stretched out to save us. So his hand is not too short to reach us to save us when we are drowning, right? Exactly. So yeah. remember, remember Peter, when Peter walked on water and he was drowning, God reached for, for him, right? So God's hand is not too short. Um, verse 2, Brother Haya. But your iniquity have separate between you and your God, and your sin have hide his face from you, that you will not hear. Okay, so if you notice, since the beginning of time, there's a reason for every single thing. Every single thing. So Isaiah 59 verse 2 gives us the answer. You know, our iniquities, the choices we make, our desires for sin have separated us from God. Right? Now, can you go back in time and try to pick out a scenario right even even if it's from the beginning a scenario where because of our sin we have separated from god where where any scenario it's even in the lesson right the lesson gave it to us yes people online you can answer enough because i'm looking at the chat i am looking at the participants and looking for the raising of the hands because you are also a part of this. So, let's go back at the beginning. Alright? At the beginning. Alright, so let me help you. Genesis 3 verse 8. 
Genesis 3, verse 8, right? Anyone? Genesis 3 and verse 8. Yes, Karen, when man sinned. Very good. Genesis 3, verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Yes. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Okay. So yes, Adam and Eve sinned. Man have fallen. And so a barrier was created. Immediately a barrier was created between Adam and Eve and God. Right? It's the same thing for us. Our iniquities have built a huge wall between us and God. But read verse 9 for me, Brother Bonner. Verse 9 of, of Genesis. Verse 9 of Genesis 3. Verse 9 says, yes. And the Lord God called unto Adam and yes. said unto him, Where art thou? Yes, where art thou? So if you notice, God is seeking. He is, he is looking for Adam and Eve, right? And it's the same thing for us. God wants us to come back to him just like the prodigal son. If you remember the prodigal son, he went everywhere, spent all his money, got rotten poor, and now he had to go back home. It's the same thing. We go out there, commit all our sins, so we have to come back to God. And God is going to come and meet us. He's not going to sit over there and say, all right, I'm going to wait till him reach. Because if God wait till him reach, remember, we just read in Isaiah, Isaiah 59, God's hand is not shortened. If God stay over there, it is going to defeat the purpose, right? So if I go back to the comparison between the prodigal son and and, and Jesus saving us. Remember, the father comes, right? Runs to his son to meet him. Same thing with Jesus. Stretches out his hand to meet us. So that is the greatest thing that could happen to us after we have sinned, right? And um, if you notice, Jesus also wanted to reason with them, right? Where art thou? Come, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet. They shall be as white as snow. Though they may be as crimson, they shall be as wool. That, that text, I think it's found in Isaiah chapter 1 and verse, verse 18. And it says, come now, let us reason together, say the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. So yes, Jesus is coming. He asked, where are thou? He wants them to, he's seeking them and he wants them to come and reason with him one on one, right? So the effects of sin, right? Going back, the effects of sin is, is separating us from God, not the other way around. God is where right there. He hasn't moved up to this very point. He hasn't moved. But because of our sin, it is separating us, creating a huge wall between us and God. Right? And that is Monday. Right? But, you know, as you read more and more in, in, as you read more verses in Isaiah 9, you will see some underlined subheadings, not really in the scripture. Right? But it says, the first one, a detailed description of sins of God's people is given. That is the first, the first subheading that I have picked out, out of Isaiah 59. No, and those are found in verses 3 to 8. Verses 3 to 8, a detailed description of the sins of God's people is given. Right? The second one is the effects of sin the people now see. So the people finally saw the effects of sin. That is between verses 8 to 12. So that's 9, 10, and 11. Verses 9, 10, and 11. The effects, the people now see the effects of the sin. The third part of Isaiah 59, the people began to confess their sins and admitting their guilt. That is verses 12 to the first part of verse number 15. Now I'm going to go over it again. Isaiah 59. So, after we have done the, the part, the portion where God in um, shown us that he is able to save us and because of our iniquities separated from God, 
a detailed description of the sins of, of, of God's people is given in verses 3 to 8. The effects of, the effects of sin, the people now see. The people now see the effects of sin. So basically they sinned and darkness come. Darkness comes along, right? And then the people began to confess their sin and admitting their guilt. That is verses 12 to the first part of verse number 15. So if you haven't read Isaiah 59, you can go ahead, read it in your spare time, and you will see these three aspects coming out. But there are more aspects, right? So because of the people now beginning to confess their sins and admitting their guilt, this takes us to Monday's lesson. Monday, where it speaks about who is forgiven. Who is forgiven. Right? If you have any questions, you could ask in the chat. And uh, I'm going to ask um, the technical personnel if something is in the chat, just lays on with me, just in case I have missed it. All right? So going on to Monday. Now I have some series of questions. So I want the chat. So I want the chat room, even on YouTube, if it's on YouTube as well, to, to just say these answers. All right? So listen. Verse, the first, the first, first question. Who is forgiven? Who is forgiven? Or who needs to be forgiven by God? Who? Who? Anybody in the studio? Who needs to be forgiven? You don't need, to, you do, you don't need the mic. Who is forgiven? We, me, you, everybody, your children, everyone. Right? So you can speak it personally. Me. Right? So, and why everybody needs to be forgiven by God? Why? Because we all have sin and what? All right. So where can we find that text? Because you know of people who might, who might be wondering where we find that text. Where can we find that text? Yes, it's in Romans. Yes, it is in Romans. But where in Romans? No, not Romans 4. Yes, Romans 3 verse. Verse. No, not 22. 23, yes, thank you, my sister. Romans 3, verse 23, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, right? So, let's move on to the other question. How can we be forgiven by God? How? Confessing our sins. Where can we find a text that speaks about confessing our sins? Remember, you know, it is less a review. People out there want to know the word. So, let us, let us go. Yes, where can you find that? Confess your sins. Or confess our sins. Where can you find that? Come on, chat room. Come on, chat room. This is a popular text, you know. This is a popular text where it speaks about confessing your sins. All right, so I'm going to help you. It is in 1 John. 1 John 1. 1 John 1. Where in 1 John 1, where does he speak about confessing your sins? First John 1. All right, so I'm going to call out some names of some individuals. Uh, Ella Brooks, where in the Bible can we find this text? 1 John 1, confess your sins. Where can we find it? If I can use the chat or I want to unmute the mic, all right, I see Karen bloating up the chat room. First John 1, verse 9. Yes, sister, sister Karen. Well done. Okay, wish I had prizes. Right? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What else? You can't just confess alone. You know, and I just, that alone you need. You need more things. What else we need? Repentance. Repent. Yes. Should repent. All right. So let me help you. Turn to second. Everybody. Turn to second Chronicles 7 verse 14. Second Chronicles 7 verse 14. Everyone just turn to second Chronicles 7 verse 14. Right? Second Chronicles 7 verse 14. If my people. All right. So I'm going to give you just my people. 10 more seconds. Yes. 
if my people were called by my name. Oh, Ella Brooks was saying, if my people, which are called by name, will humble themselves and pray, right? And what? Seek my face and what? Turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Yes. So there are steps into being forgiven by God. You can't just come, sir. You have to humble yourself. Humble yourself. Acknowledge that you have sinned, right? You pray, you seek God's face. So you show humility once again. And you what? Turn. That is the confession. No, you're turning away from your wicked ways, right? Yes. So you're humbled to acknowledge sin. Yes, Sister Karen, I see you going. I see you going. Three confession. Yes, Sister Karen, you're going. You're on the ball to the moon. Yes. All right, then there's one last step. There's one last step. Yes, for repent. There's, there's more steps, man. There are more steps. More steps to it. More steps are there, right? No, he leaves up to God now. So after he repent, it's God time now. By his grace, through redemption that is in Jesus Christ. That is how we can be forgiven as well. Now turn to Romans 3, verse 24. Romans 3 and verse 24. Right? Romans 3, verse 24. All right. Let me just find a quick. All right. Romans 3, verse 24. And it says, Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So, by his grace through redemption that is in Jesus Christ. Right? So, let's go through the steps one more time. Right? Let's go through the steps. Humble yourself. Humility is a must. Forget. Remember, you know, it's not about we. Right? It's not just about us, I should say. Right? It's about between our relationship between us and God. So, you have to humble yourself because one of the fruits of the Spirit of God is humility. So, if you're not humble, you don't have one of the fruits. So, you have to humble yourself. Then what you do? You acknowledge sin, right? You have to acknowledge your sin, right? So you have to pray and you confess your sins. Then you repent. Yes, Sister Karen, I'm reading what you have here because it's the same thing I have. But here's a shortened version. Then God will hear you, right? And forgive us of our sins. And Sister Karen said, praise God, right? And I agree. And by his grace, through redemption that is in Jesus Christ, we can be forgiven. All right, next question. Next question for everybody. Why cannot works save us, either now or in the judgment? Why cannot works save us? Why cannot works save us? Let me just give you 10 seconds to think about that. Why cannot works save us, either now or in the judgment. And this, for those who study, this is a question in the, in the, in the lesson. Right? It's a question in the lesson. Right? Why cannot works save us? Lest we should boast. Okay, very good. Anybody else? Anybody else? Salvation is the gift of God. Yes, Sister Levy. Anybody else? Anybody else? Why cannot work save us as a known? All right, let's turn to Romans 3, verse 20. Romans 3, verse 20. Romans 3, verse 20. Yes, Sister Karen. Works are only outside expression. So, phenotypically, yes, I, I'm going to jog, jog some science terms right now. So, yeah, <laughs> yes. Phenotypically, right? Is works, right? So <coughs> let us read Rome, Romans 3, verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. So the law is just to 
let us be aware that sin exists, right? Now, I made some pointers. Works reveal whether, whether we truly have been saved. Now, saved in this context, speaking yeah. about we receiving God's forgiveness, right? Receiving God's forgiveness, right? So, words only reveal whether or not we have been forgiven. We confess. We turn from our wicked ways. So, we're going out there and we're doing what God said we must do. Right? The next point I wrote down was, if works could save us, then faith is made void. Now, that is, that is in Romans 4, verse 14, where it says, right? If work could save us, then faith is made void, right? Oh, wrong, wrong, wrong page. Okay, Romans 4, verse 14, and it reads, For if they which are law be hearers, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. So, if work could save us alone, then why we need faith? You know, just to live our lives and, and express, and just express um, our, our, our relationship, Right? And faith without works is, de is dead. That is found in what? James 2 verse 26. James 2 and verse 26. Now let me just quickly find James 2 verse 26 for you. Okay. James 2 verse 26. And it reads, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is also dead. Right? And I see Sister Karen suggested um, James 2 verse 18. So let's read it. Yea, a man may yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Right? So faith without works is dead. Right? And I'm going to read the last paragraph of 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 the of the quote of Monday's lesson. And it reads Works is an outward expression, right? Uh, yes, works is an outward expression. The human manifest manifestation of a saving faith. Hence, a true, hence a true Christian experience is one in which faith is expressed in a daily commitment to the Lord that is revealed by obedience to the law. In the judgment, God uses works as evidence for his creatures who cannot read thoughts of faith as he can, right? But for the converted person, only works following conversion when the life is empowered by Christ and the Holy Spirit are relevant in the judgment. The pre-conversion life of sin has already been washed away by the blood of the Lamb. And... Uh, that now takes us to Tuesday's text. Tuesday's, no, Tuesday's lesson, right? Thinking about morning wash for a split second, right? Tuesday's lesson, and it focuses on Isaiah 60, right? Isaiah 60, and I'm going to ask someone in here to just read Isaiah 60, verses 1 and 2. Isaiah 60, verse 1, verses 1 and 2, right? Isaiah 60, verse 1 and 2, anyone? Isaiah 60, verses 1 and 2 says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Verse okay. 2, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Yes, and can you, can you read verse 3 as well? Read verse 3 as well. It's our memory text. Verse 3 says, And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Okay, so four questions. Four questions again, right? Four questions. No, what is the light and what is the darkness? 
What is the light and what is the darkness represented in this text? Right? What is the light and what is the darkness? This is, this is a super easy question, you know, so the chat should be just bloating up, you know. Chat should be bloating up, you know. Right? To me, the light represents Christ, his deliverance, and darkness to me means bondage and despair. And God says in the quarterly, it says God deliver, delivers his people following the exile expressed with imagery of God's creating light out of darkness and pointing forward to an ultimate fulfillment in salvation through Christ. So when what I get from this is, is the light is hope. It's life. It is God. And the darkness is opposite to that. Okay. Sis, yes, Sister Karen, so light is God. And darkness is the total opposite to God, which we all know is Satan. Okay. So we know that God, I'm going to expand on it. The light is God's, not, light is God himself, yes. But it's also his righteousness. It is also his holiness. It is also the character of God. Light is also the character of God. And it is also God's presence. Right? Now, God's presence, you can find Revelation 21, verse 3. Revelation 21, verse 3. And Isaiah 60, verse 19. So, just two people just quickly find that for me. Uh, Revelation 21, verse 3. 23 and Isaiah 60, verse 19. Right? Quickly. Revelation 21, verse 23 and Isaiah 60, verse 19. Right? Which one? Who was who? Which one is which? All right. Look like Brother Perrin is going to give us Revelation 21, verse 23. And Nisha and as Isaiah. Okay, thank you. Yes, go ahead, Brother. Revelation 21, 23 says, And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to yes. shine in it. Yes. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light of the earth. Yes, so we see that the presence, God's very presence is light. Isaiah 60, verse 19. The sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give a light unto thee, but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God thy glory. Yes, so the very presence of God is light. Once again, the gospel, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 6. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 6. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 6. Right, the gospel. Jesus, the light is also the gospel. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 6. Who has that one for me? Yes, Brother Robinson. For God, who had commanded the light to shine out of darkness, had shined in our hearts to give the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Yes, so the knowledge of God in the face of Jesus Christ is the gospel. So let's recap. What is the light? The light is God's righteousness, his holiness, his character, um, and his presence, and uh, the gospel, right? And we know that the darkness is the total opposite. It, the darkness is Satan's unrighteousness, his unholy nature, his bad character, his very presence is dark, and his gospel is very deceiving, right? So next question. Who is God speaking to? Who is he speaking to? Remember, we're looking at the same Isaiah 60, verse 1 to 3. Who is he speaking to? Who and who is the you in the passage? Right? Who is God speaking to? Right? Who is God speaking to? Come on, Zoom, and YouTube. Who is God speaking to in Isaiah 60, verse 1 to 3? Come on, people. 
Yes, Israel. Come home now. He's speaking about me. Yes, speaking about me. Because in the text it said, Thy light is come. Right? Speaking about us. Right? It is speaking about us. And uh, it said, Thy light is come. Right? So, why does the light have to go? Why does the light have to go to the Gentiles? Why? Why does it go to the Gentiles? Right? So, I will just go with this because I have five minutes remaining. Five minutes. So, I'm going to run through the lesson right now. So, everyone just give a listening ear and get your pens and pencils down. And if there's a text or something, right? Uh, if there's a correction to be made, it can be addressed later. All right? So, the Jews at the time were supposed to share the message, the truth given to them. Now, this is the question. Why does it go to the Gentiles? Why does the light go to the Gentiles? Right? As well. As I said, the Jews at the time were supposed to share the message, the truth given to them. They should not keep it to themselves, but spread it to all ends of the earth. When God said to Abraham in Genesis 12, that I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee, Abraham's lineage, or lineage was not supposed to keep his blessings to himself. God's purpose was to bless the entire world through his covenant with Abraham and the Jewish nation. So we receive the light. We receive the light, so we should shine it. Shine, right? So going, this going on to the next question. How do we arise? How do we share this light? Answers. I have two answers for this. Allow are four answers. Allow the Holy Spirit to anoint and transform you. Two, be, be who God made you to be. So don't try to be somebody else. Don't. Don't even try to shine either. Don't try to shine. Just shine. Right? If you want to be good, don't try to be good. Be good. Because when you try, this is what happens when you try. When you try, it leaves uncertainty. And that's what the devil wants. He wants the uncertainty of your heart. And that is what he's going to use to manipulate you. Right? And that is not a good thing. Because you don't want to be in darkness. We want to be in light. Because remember, when you're in darkness too long, you probably can't go see. And then you get so comfortably in darkness, right? But you see, the moment, the thing is now, with darkness, you see, the moment light comes in, darkness becomes uncomfortable. Very, very uncomfortable, right? Even with us, if we stay in darkness for a good, good while, we get comfortable. But as soon as a light enters the room, guess what happens? We want to go to the light, right? We want to go to the light. So, we also should study his word. Number point number three, we should also study his word. Psalm 119, verse 105. And then number four, make a choice for God and his way. Romans 13, verse 12. Now we'll move on to Wednesday, where it talks about the fair, the year of the Lord's favor. Now, if you look in Isaiah 60, verse 1, the prophecy that was, the prophecy, this prophecy was, before it was fulfilled, it's talking about the Messiah, right? Um, talking about the Messiah purpose on earth after he was anointed by the Holy Spirit um, immediately after he was baptized, right? And you can find that in Matthew 3, verse 16 and 17. The fulfillment of this prophecy is in Luke 4, verses 16 to 22. Luke 4, verse 16 to 22. Now, uh, if you go back in, in Leviticus, Leviticus, um, in the 50th year, per persons were free, right? Persons were released from their bondage. They were emancipated, right? Um, so it's the same thing Jesus came here to do. Jesus comes here to free us from sin, right? And he is also here to give us a shot at salvation as well. So the year of the Lord's favor, if you compare what happened in Leviticus and what Jesus has done, right, it's the same thing. Leviticus is more physical, right? And what Jesus did is he did it physically, but for a spiritual meaning, right? So 
that is basically Wednesday, the year of the Lord's favor. But if you notice, going on to Thursday, if you notice that when Jesus was declaring himself, when Jesus was declaring himself, right, um, revealing himself through a ministry of liberation and restoration, what Jesus did not speak about the day of the day of vengeance of our God. He didn't mention it. Why? Because the day of the vengeance of our God is the second coming. This is where Jesus is going to come and redeem everyone from this sinful life if you, are, if you are living the life, if you are forgiven, right? If, if you have received his seal, right? And we all know that his seal is tied up into the Sabbath day. So the second coming is the day of vengeance of our God. So, wrapping up the lesson. It's 10.30. My time is up. Wrapping up the lesson. Right? So, if you notice the lesson, where the lesson starts. The effects of sin. Then, because sin has play, put us in a dark space, in a dark era, we have to go to God for forgiveness. Then, the appeal after we go and we get forgiveness the universal appeal for everybody who has received God's forgiveness, right, is to go and show it. Same thing like Global Youth Day today. It is, we should be the sermon, go and shine a light. Remember, uh, Matthew 5, right? Matthew 5, where it speaks about let your light so shine. I think it's Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Then, Jesus came and showed us how to live. He came and died for our sins, right? So that we may prepare ourselves, right? He set us free so that we can prepare ourselves, right? For the second coming of his father. So the second coming, the advent, right? We are seventh-day Adventists. We are children of God. If you are a child of God, we should look, be looking forward to that great day. So, brethren and friends, let us just remember that Christ is coming, right? He's coming back for prepared people. And as the moderators for Sabbath school prepare themselves, I just want everyone to just pray, not now, whenever you get the chance, no, not whenever you get the chance. Make the time to pray to God and say, God, this and that and that. God wants us to come and reason with him. So let us go reason with God so that we may come and receive the gift, the place that he has prepared for us. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for the lesson review today. I really hope you have learned something new. And uh, I just turn over to the moderators for uh, Sabbath School. Welcome back. Neighbor, Jesus is here. The Bible, a light unto our feet and a light unto our path. Let's quickly jump back to our field reporter, Sister Banner, who have found yet another set of Good morning again. It seems that our, our feed from the from the shutins seem to have be having a little technical difficulties, but we are still out on the road. Good morning. We're here. We're here. Okay. 
go, go ahead, Sasha. Okay, so we're here. We're coming to you from the home of Sister Kathy. We're now singing Sister Kathy's favorite hymn, Higher Ground. Lord, lift me up and I shall stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher faith than I have found. Lord, hands my feet on higher ground. Now, Sister Kathy, you're live. With the Stadium Community Church, you can tell them hi, you can give them a wave. <laughs> hi. Hi. Amen. Amen. So you'd like to leave a, a, a word of encouragement with the young people and with the church? Amen. Amen. So that's it from Sister Kathy and us here in the field. We'll see you guys soon. Have a happy Sabbath. I really wish that we could have all been out there today reaching up and reaching across being the sermon. We close our program today with the smallest member on our team here at Stadium Community SDA, Stadcom TV, and who will make you feel even more welcome. Over to you. Happy Sabbath to today. A very hop and arms away. Why this in the For the Bible tells us when someone to hear what's up. For the water says so. With Amy, he may sing. For the Bible tells us so. Hey, does he me a sin? First Hey, what do you Happy Sabbath, AJ. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, everybody. I'll be back from program. <laughs> and in time to blow down. Happy Sabbath, Bye. AJ. Goodbye. What? Happy Shabbat, sir. Happy. You have been gracious to allow us through your airwaves this morning. Thank you. And remember, reach up and reach across. I leave with you, Jesus, on the cross. Sinners just like you and I had not only made poor decisions, but they had beaten and hung him to die. They beat him. They ridiculed him. They tore at his flesh and gambled for his clothes. Have you experienced that? Can you even imagine? What did Christ say? How did he even respond? How did our Savior respond? Father, forgive him. For they do not know what they are doing. Luke 23, verse 34. Take in those very words. Each and every time you step away, turn your back, 
moan or groan or sigh with exasperation over someone else's sin. Take in those very words when you talk to others who may not live the way you do. Take in those very words when you feel compelled to condemn or criticize others. If Jesus can offer you up his murders for God's forgiveness while dying on the cross, I think we can find it in our hearts to take a tiny piece of that love and grace and pour it out to those who know not what they do. My sisters and brothers in Christ, take off your halo and reach out your hand. I will repeat for your memory, Christ's method. Christ's method alone will give true success in reaching the people. The Savior mingled with men as one who desired their good. He showed his sympathy for them, ministered to their needs, and won, and won their confidence. Then he bade them, follow me. Please remember to join us for AY this afternoon at 4 p.m., where we take at our youth in action as they reach up and reach across. This is Aisha Rowe. This is Dr. Harry Doman saying, seek guidance from God in witnessing, and then we will be equipped to reach out to dying souls. Have a blessed Sabbath. It is, it is certainly good to be here online in the virtual church here at Stadium Community Seventh-day Adventist Church. And we have been having a wonderful, wonderful time here. As you know, today is Global Youth Day. And our youths have been out. And as you see, our AY leader, she was out and she was interviewing and she has been at Shotin's homes and she has been talking to our Shotin's and interviewing them and witnessing in the community. Oh, so this, so this morning, I have with me um, in, in studio live, uh, my son, Jamani Mori and sister Nisha and Moisten who are out this morning. And I just want to ask them, Jamani, how was it? What, what did this witnessing and going out do for you this morning and what would you how would you encourage other young people to get on board well what we went out and did we went to up to the intersection of old hope road and we gave out flyers and hand sanitizers to persons in cars persons walking on the street and as a christian it made me feel good inside to see many smile we got some warm smiles even though we have some people that's wide out the windows, but still being able to tell others about the love of God and that God loves them and that tell them that about oh, the upcoming crusade, it made others happy. And just leave a nice little word with them also helped as well. Great, wonderful. Misha Ann, how do you encourage other young people to be witnesses for Jesus and that there is a blessing that is in store for them when they tell others about the love of Jesus? And, just, and, and also tell me, what did to this morning do for you? Okay, what this morning did for me, uh, we live in a world that is plumbing, plummeting into darkness. So when I was able to give a flyer and say, have a nice day, because that's all we could really basically say in terms of the light changing and so on. Um, you know, seeing the smiles on the faces, it really um, showed me that this whole Christ wants to see the smiles on everyone's face when he does come back. Um, how would I encourage someone is that, this world is not going to last. So understanding that Christ did all for us, I, I see it as a blessing to do the same, give our all for the people. That's just as how Christ gave his all for the people. Wonderful. And so you, you'd say to other young people, what would you say to other young people who are, who are timid, who are uh, afraid, 
who might feel that I'd be insulted when I approach someone to give them a track or to say something, to something about Christ. I would say, don't would be say, timid. Don't, don't be shy. Be timid. Because, don't imagine shy because, because imagine if I'm imagine timid, I'm shy, I don't really, want, don't really right? want to face this. Right? What, right? so what would happen to us? So I would say, so I would say walk with God. Walk have walk him with as God. Have him as sight basically and you won't worry about what people have to say all right great i'm um, jamani any final words for our youth this morning just that to ask the holy spirit for his guidance don't be afraid as nishan said jesus went out to many people some turned him away some accept, accepted him but should not be afraid let's ask the holy spirit to guide us and give us that courage and we'll do the work of god amen thank you very much jamani and misha and that's the word from our youth who are on the battlefield for the Lord who are engaged in ministry for Jesus Christ of Nazareth and who have been lifting and waving the bloodstained banner of Prince Emmanuel loud and clear. Thank you very much. And we hope that other young people get on board and want to do ministry for Jesus Christ because that is what the church is all about. The church is a mission field and each of us has been called to be ministers for Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If you want to be a minister, um, um, to minister for Jesus Christ, just wave your hand in the chat or just say, I just type amen. And as you know, um, I'm just here to quickly promote the, 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 the school of um, the Bible school. And I want each person, I know that many of you young people know more than one um, um, person. You have your friends who are online. You have your friends in your WhatsApp groups. You have your friends who you go to school with. I want you to enroll just one of those friends. Talk to that friend. Invite that friend to sign up for one of these lessons in the Hope for Christ Bible lesson series. This, um, when you come online at 5.30 on a Sunday evening, it, um, the lesson study lasts for just half an hour. It's not a long time. And it's interesting. It, 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 it is faith-based. It is power back and it is really a blessing. And so I'm asking you, my young friends and adults, just to sign up one person for the Hope in Christ Bible lesson series. There's a blessing awaiting you. When you work for Christ, you can't lose. And so get in your WhatsApp chat, get on your telephone, get in your MSM, text someone, tell them you want to, you want them to enroll in the class. The link is there. I'm going to ask my, my, my tech person, Sister Demi Shaperin. She can put that link on the screen and that you will see that link where you can join us on a Sunday evening at 5.30 to 6 and on a Wednesday evening at 5.36. And the lessons are in the link that you can sign up and get that, and get that going. And I just also want to remind that the same link that you join for the service is the same link that you use to join the Hope in Christ Bible lesson series. And guess what happening this evening? This evening we have a live online concert just for you. So you need to get your friends and your neighbors and your families and have them join us at um, 5.30 for this concert series. It promises to be um, um, to, um, to be wonderful, and you can't afford to miss it. As you know, this afternoon, this 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 morning rather, we'll be having the launch of the Hope in Christ um, evangelistic um, um, health evangelistic series, and we have a lot of um, stuff that is in store for those who join, for those who sign up. We want person to come online. We want you to get your friends to sign up. There is a registration page also for our, for our members of the community and our family members and visitors who will be coming online. We all want you to sign up for the Hope in Christ Health Evangelistic um, Series. Here we have, um, we'll be having intercessor prayer. We'll be having counseling. We'll be having um, um, musical treat, health and wellness um, exercise program. And you can't um, afford to miss that. We'll be, ha we'll be having Dr. Lamley. We'll be having also uh, Pastor James Patterson, who will be on board, and a number of other health presenters who will be talking to us about holistic, holistic health, about being more healthy, about being, being more energetic, about eating right, and the stuff we need to keep our energy level up and to stay um, virus-free or 
to make sure we maintain a healthy lifestyle. So we want all of us to be on board. Remember our host pastor over here, Pastor Sadiqi Beckford. And there's a blessing awaiting you online when you join online with this live experience. So type your, and you, you'll be able to, to interact with others in the chat as we have a wonderful time fellowship, fellowshipping with Jesus Christ and with this power back spiritual, um, spiritual team. Um, with the evangelist, Pastor C.M. Cunningham is a host of health practitioners and also uh, elders. And with, with him also is a number of e, um, NCU pastoral graduates who will join us on, online. So I'm asking all of us, sign up, tell your friends, let us make sure we are here on time. Remember, the series starts at 6 o'clock in the evening. So tomorrow evening, Sunday evening, we start at 6 o'clock sharp, and we continue, and we end at 7.30. It's a power pack, one and a half hour, and you can't afford to miss even a minute. So cook your meals early. Get home from work early. Come, sit down, join in line. Praise the Lord. Sing with us. Take something in the chat. Invite someone. And let us have a wonderful time with the Lord. As the blessing awaiting you, have yourself a wonderful spiritual Sabbath as we continue to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. God bless you.
Please listen to the following announcements and fit in where you're being asked. Today's being celebrated has 
Global Youth Day. Our young persons are presently on the road distributing the items which they have solicited. And so far we got a report from team members that these persons whom we have so chosen to bless this morning is indeed a blessed. So from the AY department, we want to say thank you very much for your contribution of these non-perishable items. And may the Lord continue to bless your storehouses. Today mark the launch of our Hope in Christ Gospel Health series. And this will climax on the 17th of April, 2021. The evangelist will be Pastor Carl Cunningham, while his co-host, Pastor Sadiq Beckford. This series will run weekly at 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m., except on a Thursday and on a Sunday at 9.15 a.m. There will be special, special features in this series, such as intercessory prayers, counseling, weddings, music treats, and health and wellness exercise program, etc. We will have quite a few dynamic presenters on naturopathic health. In collaboration with this launch, we will have an online gospel concert this evening, beginning 5.30 p.m. via Zoom. We will have a Bible class this evening at 3 p.m. There will not be any teach Sabbath school teacher training program this week, but next week at 3 p.m., AY will follow at 4 p.m. Please note that you don't have to be a teacher to be a part of the Sabbath School Teacher Training Program. All are invited to participate via Zoom. Our Hope in Christ online Bible class continues Sundays and Wednesdays at 5.30 p.m. Belated happy birthday to our sister, Sasha Banner, who celebrated her birthday yesterday. Elder Brumfield celebrated his birthday this week as well. Same day. So we will sing happy birthday to these, our members. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear celebrants. Happy birthday to you. And your thought for today. We serve a risen Savior. And yes, he is in our world, this world today. We know that he is living in spite of covid and whatever men may say, we can seize hands of mercy in all that we do each day. And just the time we need him, he is always there. This comes to the end of, we've come to the end of our announcement. If there is any other, we will have it before the day's end. Thank you. As we sing, blessed be the name of the Lord, to begin our divine service, we ask that you just whisper a prayer in your heart. Blessed be the name of the Lord, he is worthy to be praised and adored, so we lift up holy hands in one accord, singing blessed. 
Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let, let, let me take my gift card in the front. He is worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift up holy hands in one accord. Our call to worship comes to us from Revelation chapter 14, and we will go from verse 6 through to verse 10. Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 through to verse 10. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and fountains of waters. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And verse 9 says, And the third angel followed them saying, With a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image, and receive the mark of his in his forehead or in his hand, the same, verse 10, shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. The church is now called to worship. to shepherd come and lead us Lord we need you to help us find our way Turn to shepherd come and lead us for we need your strength from day to day there's no other we can turn to who can help us face another day. Gentle shepherd, come and lead us, for we need you to help us find your you bow your heads with me as we pray father we are truly thankful to you for this your holy sabbath day this is the day that you have made and we have decided to rejoice and be glad in it as we worship today on your holy sabbath we pray now that we will worship in spirit and in truth come down holy ghost in copious showers and bless our hearts today we pray in jesus name Amen. Amen. Now we are going to get familiar with our theme song. This is a song that you will hear every night of the Hope in Christ Gospel and Health series. We want to bring hope to the world. We want to bring hope to our family members, hope to our friends. And so we ask oh, that you join in that if you know the song. In. Try if to catch on if you don't know it. We'll still sing. 
and we ask that you sing with us. When your burden's heavy, cause you have strayed, and it seems there's no mercy, or it's been delayed, just like the prodigal son, you've got to rise, you've got to be bold, and go back into his fold. There is hope, there is hope in the Lord, there is hope in King Jesus, there is hope in God, there is hope, there is hope in the Lord, there is hope in King Jesus, hope in God. Words such as this, the love of many wax cold, you wonder what is amiss, the fear of getting old. Every dark cloud, there is a silver lining, and at the end of the road, there is hope, Morning. that's why we see. There is hope, there is hope in the Lord, there is hope in King Jesus, there is hope in God, there is hope, there is hope in the Lord, there is hope in King Jesus. Hope in God, there is hope, there is hope in the Lord, there is hope in King Jesus, there is hope in God, there is hope, there is hope in the Lord, there is hope in King Jesus, hope in God. Amen, amen, amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. I am so delighted to be with you this morning. I am elated to be in the house of God to worship in the beauty of holiness. I welcome you today in a very special way to uh, this place, a very special online uh, platform this morning. For there is no place anywhere near this, this place, for this is indeed the place to be. Our brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, in this time of unprecedented chaos, mayhem, in this time of laxity, of frivolity, and indecency, we have come to such a time as this. I heard a President Biden a few days ago telling the world, telling the American people that they need a dose of hope, meaning the vaccine. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible tells us of the dose of hope, and that dose of hope is Jesus Christ, our Lord and King. Within that context and within that vein of this uh, evil world, I welcome you in a very special and particular way to the Hope in Christ uh, online health gospel series. I welcome you from the Cayman Islands. I welcome you from the South America. I welcome you from North America. I welcome you from, from Africa. Wherever you are in Europe, we welcome you. Please like, subscribe to our channel. Share this link, for we are about to have a great time. It is indeed with distinct joy and privilege I introduce the man of God and his family. He is a man of many hats. He is the assistant to the president of East Jamaica Conference. He is the a personal ministry director, uh, plus others. 
He is married to one wife, and the union has produced three adult children. I'm talking non. I'm talking about the dynamic pastor evangelist Carl Cunningham. He will be the man of God to share with us hope on a nightly basis. I am also delighted to introduce our dear president, Pastor Eric Nathan, a president of the East Jamaica Conference, and the assistant to the president, Pastor Joseph Simmons from the Jamaica Union Conference. And in that order, both men will give greetings and endorsement. And uh, at, after both men would have given their endorsements and greetings, the assistant to the president from Jamaica Union, Pastor Joseph Smith, will pray the prayer of consecration. Thank you. Let, let me just come right in right now, Pastor Siddiqui. And I want to use this opportunity to greet my brethren and friends. And it is not any secret that, that the brethren at Stadium Community have had a, a real deep impression on my heart and my mind. That's the last church that I served as a district pastor. And the, the taste is still in my, on my tongue. And so anything that is happening at Stadium Community, it is my joy to feel a part of that family. And so it gives me great pleasure on behalf of the administration of East Jamaica Conference, Pastor Linton, our executive secretary. And we are very happy to have Elder Michael Porteous as our treasurer. As a team, we, we work together and we share in collaboration with whatever happens in our conference. And I am pleased to, to, to be, be the one to, to, to secondary introduce to you a man of God, the man who has been faithful in being the assistant to the president in the area of evangelism and training. But when I talk to him from time to time, I call him the advisor to the president because he has rich advice from time to time to share with the president. As he sees me go from extremes to extreme, he is the one who had to bring me into the middle of the road. And so this morning, I'm privileged to say that the brethren of the Rollington Town District and yea, the, the Stadium Community Church, it's privileged to have a man who is the, the teacher, the principal of the School of Evangelism. And, and he is going to be having some of the students from the School of Evangelism to do their practicum right in these campaigns. And I want to let you know that he is the one who will be bringing some of the students from NCU who have done the theory, but to be able to apply theory to practice. Pastor Cunningham is a man who will do that as a, as a, as a joy he, he enjoys, sharing his knowledge in evangelism with, with, the, with the East Jamaica Conference. And I'm sure that the Hope in Christ gospel concern, the Hope in Christ health series is going to be of great benefit to people even in these days of COVID crises. Anything, any information on how we can adapt to good health practices. And I see he has a lot of individuals lined up to bring to you time after time good health tips and how we can build our immune system, how we can reduce cancer, how we can reduce high blood pressure, and all of these things, you will get not only the spoken words, but he will bring to you something that will enhance our immune system as he finds health practitioners around the world to bring to you health messages. So my brothers and sisters, from the stadium community. I want to say also as I go, happy birthday to my friend, Sister Banner and Brother Broomfield. These are brethren who have been very close to me as I serve as a pastor in that area. I will be with you in your campaign from time to time as I 
as I serve the entire conference, night after night, I would want to leave different platforms to come and taste and see the goodness that you'll be having there at Stadium Community. God bless you. Pastor Cunningham, I thank you for being such a good servant of the Lord, a real doulos, one who is willing to give everything that he has to the work of the Lord. And I'm sure the stadium community is going to be blessed in having this man of God to be with you for these few days. I will pray for him. I will support him. I will be able to give him all kind of help that he will ask for. So God bless you. Today is going to be a great day. And as president of the conference, I want to endorse a tremendous program and encourage you to give good support to those young pastors when they come on board and as they serve in this wonderful campaign. God bless you. Thank you for inviting me. And you have in my, in my presidential office the support that I can give. Thank you, and may God bless you. Have a great Sabbath, and I will join you from time to time. Pastor Cunningham, over to you, sir, my friend and brother. Uh, thank you, Pastor. Uh, Dr. Nathan, delighted to join you, sir, oh, in uh, greeting the brothers and sisters from the Stadium Gardens Community Church uh, on this, the beginning of an outstanding series that we know God is going to use mightily to lead men and women to the kingdom of God. I must commend you, uh, Dr. Nathan, for your passion, your commitment, and for your drive in advancing the mission there in East Jamaica Conference. And of course, standing right by your side is none other than Pastor Carl Cunningham, my friend, my colleague in ministry, uh, one that we have gone back uh, very far with. We have been over 30 years of uh, preaching the gospel and working together, and I am confident that God is going to use him mightily. So I, I, I bring you greetings from the president of our union, uh, Pastor Everett Brown, for the, from the other administrators and directors we continue to hold up your hand. Now, I am pleased to endorse this series, this very special uh, Hope in Christ Gospel and Health series. Uh, this is a series that could not have come at a more appropriate time. You have chosen the right theme, the right emphasis, uh, the gospel of Christ and the health message. The coronavirus is creating a lot of fear anxiety, hopelessness, and death across the globe. People are hopeless. People are fearful. People are anxious. What is going to happen next? What is going to happen next week? What is going to happen next year? What is going to, in fact, some of us here in Jamaica are wondering what is going to happen tomorrow when uh, the government uh, announces new measures. What is going to happen? There is fear. In fact, we have a uh, a lot of research that is showing that there is a lot of persons are seeking counseling. They are, they, 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 a lot of persons are affected psychologically. They are seeking counseling. Recently, I visited a, a doctor who pointed out that even children, young children, are suffering from anxiety. And, uh, and she pointed out to me that she is seeing an increase in young people, children. Everyone is fearful. There's hopelessness everywhere. The theme could not have been more appropriate. You have chosen the right theme, Christ, uh, the, the, the hope in Christ gospel series, the right note. And I am confident that God is going to use you mightily. The gospel of Christ remains the only hope for a world that is facing hopelessness. The gospel of Christ is the best remedy for this pandemic. And so I want to commend you, Pastor Sadiq Beckford, you and uh, the officers and members of the Stadium Gardens Community Church, uh, you are exercising courage, Christian courage at this time, as you embark on this series. This is a time when some people are hiding from church, but you have decided to embark on it. God has called you to the kingdom for such a time as this. Commendation to you, my pastor. Commendations to Pastor Cunningham, a man of passion and commitment who is always fired up with the gospel of Jesus Christ. As you go forth to share the good news of the gospel, my prayers are with you. I'll be praying for the, for the team. 
I'll be praying for you, Pastor Cunningham. I'll be praying for you, Pastor Beckford. I'll be praying for the church that God will lead the Stadium Gardens Community Church and uh, by extension, this platform to reach every person across the community, across this island, across the globe who need to come to Jesus before it is too late. My prayers are with you, and I know God is going to bless you. So on behalf of our president, I accept our deepest uh, and our sincerest prayers and support. And of course, I will be joining you uh, as you pr proceed in the series. So may God bless you and strengthen you. Go forth with God. He is with you. It is his mission, and he will empower you and equip you to do the work to be done. And so now I invite my brothers and sisters, I invite all of you to bow your heads as we seek the Lord in prayer, as we consecrate this series to God. Let us pray. Almighty God and our ever-loving Father, we come in your presence on this your holy Sabbath day to magnify and to adore your high and holy name. It is through you, O oh God, that we live and move and have our being. It is because of your great mercies why we are not consumed. We come to you today as your children in the context of the launch of this uh, evangelistic series that, it is, that is intended to bring hope and encouragement to your people. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the Stadium Gardens Community Church which has been a beacon of light and hope in the community. You have a message that this church has been echoing, that men and women have been responding to. And those who have responded to the mes message are not content to sit down with it. They recognize their responsibility, especially at this very critical time when there is hopelessness all around. They recognize their task and the commission you have given that they should lift up their voices like trumpet and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so this morning, oh heavenly father, we thank you for the church. We thank you for the pastor. We thank you for the administ the officers of the church. And now, oh God, we place this series that is designed and appointed by you for the salvation of souls. We pray your special blessing upon this series that as the message goes forth from the church, that men and women, boys and girls will come to know you, whom to know is life eternal. In a special way, gracious Lord, we pray for the evangelist, Pastor Carl Cunningham, your son and servant. You have used him over the years. There are hundreds of persons today who are rejoicing in the salvation that is provided through Jesus Christ, a salvation that he has preached. He has lifted up Jesus, and many are rejoicing today, and we praise your name for his work. But, oh God, you have called him to the kingdom for such a time as this. You have called him to lift up his voice like a trumpet at this very critical time, a time of hopelessness, fear, and anxiety, a time when many are dying from the effects of this coronavirus. Yet in the midst of this hopelessness, you have brought this series to bring hope and encouragement, to let people know, yes, that this world is not our home, but like Abraham, we are looking forward to a city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. And so we place the evangelists in your hands. Oh God, we are begging for a, a double portion of your spirit upon him. Anoint him afresh. Lord, you use him in the past. But the past cannot take care of the present need. So equip him one more time. Fill him with your spirit. Anoint him and bless him. And as you use him, oh God, bless the family members who will stand by to give support. Bless the church. Bless all who will lift him up. We pray, pre present them in your hands. In a special way, we pray, oh God, for Pastor Beckford, the host pastor who must manage and give leadership and must serve as the co-evangelist. We ask also a double portion of your spirit upon him. Anoint him afresh and use him mightily. We pray for every member of the team, oh God. In a special way, we present to you the prayer team. That team that must connect every night, every Sabbath with heaven to make sure that there is a clear channel for the flowing of the power so that hearts can be touched, lives can be transformed, 
and men and women can come to know you. Oh God, in a special way of all the team members we are praying for this morning, we are asking for a double portion of your spirit upon the prayer team. They have an awesome task to do of helping men and women to come to know you, of basically opening the channel so that as the gospel goes forth, hearts will be receptive. Bless the prayer team. Bless the, bless the singers. Bless the Bible workers, oh God, who must knock on doors, who must make calls, who must connect with individuals. We pray, oh God, that you will open their hearts and their minds, that you will make them alert and aware of those who are seeking you, that none will be passed by. But at the end of the series, every single person who you wanted to save at this time will come to know you, whom to know is life eternal. So bless the prayer team, bless the Bible workers, bless the singers as they sing, oh God, may it not be for show, but may it be for ministry so that hearts can be touched and lives can be transformed. We place in your hands the technicians. Oh God, we ask that you will bless them, that you will inspire them, that you will use them as messengers of hope. Those who will be monitoring the various platforms, use them, oh God. Use every member of the team. In a special way, gracious Lord, we place in your hands the members of the church. Inspire each one, touch each one, transform each one, oh God, and use each one as an instrument of your peace. We are praying, oh God, that every member of the Stadium Gardens Community Church will answer the call of Jesus, like Isaiah the prophet saying, I will go. I will go to my neighbor. I will go to my community. I will go to my friend. Yea, even if I have enemies, I will go to them. But I will go to every person that Christ wants me to go to. I will share the link. I will ask them to subscribe. I will ask them to listen. I will follow up with them. If they need Bible study, I will be there with them to help them and encourage them. Oh God, touch every member of the team. Touch every member of the church. And in a special way, oh God, we pray for those who will join in the program in the night on the various platforms. Visitors, we are asking you, oh God, we know that souls are searching. Men and women are desperate and destitute. Lead them, oh God, to this platform. Lead them to this series. And above all, lead them to yourself. And we pray, oh God, that when this series is over, that hearts will rejoice. The members of the church will be revived and transformed and we will all be ready for the glorious appearing of jesus bless this series bless the workers and honor your awesome name as you save souls for your kingdom it is to this and we pray and say thanks to jesus christ our lord and our savior and let everybody say amen and amen Again, the distinct honor and privilege is mine to welcome you to the our first day of the Hope in Christ evangelistic series. I welcome you from across the world. I welcome you to this online a platform. Please stick and stay with us. Don't touch that dial. I pray today that the Lord will bless you tremendously and uh, powerfully. Uh, please, uh, at this time, one more time, please share the link with your friend. With all those who are in your contact list, share the link and uh, come on this platform. God is about to uh, use his man servant in a very special way. And so our members, we are so grateful that you are with us. This program could have never been what it ought to be unless you are with us on this platform. So I welcome you once. I welcome you uh, thrice. Second, I welcome you thrice. Welcome you to this platform. God bless you and please enjoy the rest of the day. Join us as we fellowship. If you're happy 
We'll sing. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. You are the word at the beginning. One with God, the Lord most high. Your hand. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. That sin was great. Your love was greater. Your yeah, sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. That could not hold you. The veil tore before you. You silenced the voice of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring. The grave. Yours is the glory, yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is, what a powerful name it is. 
I think my task today is a very short one and very easy, I would say. My job is to invite the speaker of the day to the desk. Before he comes, however, the song of meditation of the song to bring our hearts into a unity of spirit. And then we'll have our evangelist, Pastor Carl Cunningham. Do you have to 
Gracious, kind, eternal, heavenly Father, we are most delighted for this opportunity to worship you in the beauty of holiness. Oh God, we pray one more time you will forgive our sins. We ask you that you will anoint every worshiper with the efficacious blood of Jesus Christ. We ask you, O oh God, one more time that you will anoint the preacher from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. We ask right now that your power will move through virtual space. We ask God that you will harass every demonic force that is assigned to handcuff, to disrupt our, 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 our internet this morning. We ask, O oh God, that hearts will be born for your kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Amen.
Happy Sabbath, everyone. Malachi 3 and verse 10 said, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. Now is the time for offering. How can we bring the tithes into the storehouse while we are online? I share some ways with you this morning. The first one is that you can go online. And information should be on your screen now of how to go online. The online account is at BNS Crossroad 631154. That is a current account at Crossroad Scotiabank. Also, a US account, savings account, 8013707. 2-3, BNS Crossroad. Or you can drop off at a church throughout this day. And the third one is that you can arrange for it to be picked up. That is your tithes and offering can be picked up if you call the number, the phone number, which should be on your screen also. And then arrangement will be made for your offering and your tithes to be picked up. Brothers and sisters, remember Moses command the children of Israel to bring an offering to make the sanctuary and the children of Israel brought so much that Moses said to them, you don't need to bring any more. So I encourage each and every one of us today to be faithful to God because he is always faithful to us. His mercy renewed every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. So as we contribute, as we contemplate how we are going to contribute to the cause of the gospel, bow your heads with me as I pray. Gracious, loving God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your goodness towards us. We thank you for health and strength and for the opportunity to work and to earn. And as we return a faithful tithe and a free will offering, we ask, O oh God, that you may bless it and help us all to use it according to your will. Continue to be with your people. Continue to bless your people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. We sing together, thanks, thanks, I give you thanks. Thanks, thanks, I give you thanks for all you done. And I am so blessed, my soul is at rest, oh. stand by for the children's story.
ends at his home in the Solomon Islands. But he wasn't happy. Joe's family lived in a poor neighborhood in the South. Pacific country's capital, Honiara. Neighbors sold illegal drugs and children stole and got into tr trouble with the police. Joe's house was a popular place for neighborhood boys to hang out every evening. He noted that one of his friends didn't talk Ten-year-old Joe watched movies and played video games with friends at his home in the Solomon Islands, but he wasn't happy. Joe's family lived in a poor neighborhood in the South Pacific country's capital, Honiara. Neighbors sold illegal drugs, and children stole and got into trouble with the police. Joe's house was a popular place for neighborhood boys to hang out every evening. He noticed that one of his friends didn't talk like the other boys and participated in something called a Pathfinder Club every Sabbath. Joe decided to join his friend at the Seventh-day Adventist Church to learn more. Soon, he joined the Pathfinders as well and went to church every Sabbath. After a while, Joe and the other Pathfinders were invited to fly to Australia to attend a camporee for Pathfinders from all over the South Pacific Division. He really wanted to go, so Mom worked hard to save money for his plane ticket. When Mom was finally able to buy his ticket, Joe flew to the camporee and enjoyed every second of it. When Joe returned home and the neighborhood boys came over that evening, he told stories from the camporee. The boys loved the stories, so they asked to hear more the next evening. Then Joe thought to himself, My friends like to hear about Pathfinders. Why not tell them about Jesus, too? So each evening when his friends came over, Joe kept telling them stories from the Pathfinder Camporee, but also began to share stories from the Bible. Joe's friends enjoyed his stories so much that they invited other boys from the neighborhood to come hear them too. Soon, 30 to 40 boys came to Joe's house every evening to learn more about Jesus. Although mom didn't have much money, she began to cook food for the children to eat after story time. She somehow always had enough food for everyone. Joe's new friends began to ask him if they could join Pathfinders, and four joined him at church the next Sabbath. More of his friends came to church the following week. The Pathfinder leader couldn't understand where all these children were coming from. Joe, why are so many kids from your neighborhood coming to Pathfinder Club? He asked. What did you do? I didn't do anything, Joe replied. I just tell them stories about what we did in Australia, and we have evening devotions, that's all. The leader asked to visit Joe's home to see the evening get-togethers for himself. When he came that evening, he was amazed at what he saw. Afterward, he said to mom, this neighborhood would be a good place to open a church. He noticed that Joe's house had a large unfinished living room that no one used and asked if it could be used for Sabbath worship. Mom agreed. Several dozen neighborhood children came to Joe's house for church the next Sabbath. All the Pathfinder leaders and their families came as well, and they brought food for everyone. Then something happened that made Joe very happy. Mom decided to be baptized. Not long after, his 20-year-old cousin was baptized too, and so were three of his neighborhood friends whom Joe had introduced to Pathfinders. Today, Joe's living room is packed every Sabbath with about 70 people, and plans are underway to open a permanent church in the neighborhood. Now, Joe is 13 years old. He's humble in appearance and speech, but no one doubts that God is using him in a powerful way. 
I may be small, but in Go Jin, I can grow a church. Like Joe, you too can help grow God's church as you share Jesus with your friends and family. We'll now have the introduction of our speaker. At this time, um, I will just invite the speaker. The fact is, having heard so much about our speaker, or illustrious speaker, I have no choice but to invite Pastor Cunningham at, at the desk at this time. But before he comes, we want to bring our hearts into unity of spirit. And so we'll have a song of meditation. And the next voice you hear will be that of Pastor Cunningham. We are standing on holy ground. Praise the 
Lord. Hallelujah. What a day. This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The day of the Lord. Let us pray together as we indeed, like Moses, stand in the presence of God in a special way on holy ground. Father and our God, what an awesome God you are. You who occupy illimitable space, yet somehow mysteriously you have made it possible for us to experience your dwelling power among us in this setting, even as we are gathered together online in cyberspace, in virtual worship gathering this morning, this day, and Lord, in a special way, we know that the presence of the Lord occupies us and our space today. And so, Lord, in a special way, I surrender myself one more time. That God will use this mortal lump of clay to bring hope and encouragement and the assurance of a path of deliverance and assurance. In Jesus' name, let every word of my mouth and every meditation of each heart that worships you now be acceptable in your sight. Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Somebody praise God with me. Wherever you are, lift up your hands and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. COVID or no COVID, God is good all the time. God is good. I want to thank everyone who has joined us so far. I want to thank our leaders who have endorsed this program from East Jamaica Conference, our president and the leaders there, and from the Jamaica Union. And I want to thank all the leaders and officers and members and our pastor from the Stadium Community Church. And there are people all over who are praying for us. Let me tell you something. This is something awesome and special happening. And wherever you are, hold your place. Because this craft is going to move in high gear. And will sail on at great altitude for God. As together we worship the Lord over the next few weeks in this setting. I want to thank my wife for her support and of my sons or, or sons who are praying with us and for us and our family extended as we share together. I join with the leaders in apologizing for the glitches we've been having since morning. But outside of that, a little glitch here and there, God has been good and we are being blessed here at the stadium community grounds at 4 to 6 Herb McKinley Drive. And as soon as Jamaicans behave themselves a little better <laughs> and the government say we can come back on physical gathering, then you could register and become a member of our studio audience. But until then, please tell your friends and neighbors that we are online. You have your Zoom platform Com, uh, connection and you are on YouTube and where, uh, Facebook, wherever you are. That's the world in which we're living now. And we just got to work with the new order. Amen. That is why I want to talk with you now on the topic. Nevertheless, I will 
go. Say the topic, let me feel it. Are you with me? Nevertheless, I will go. The team that is here with me in studio, just the number that the government requires, and they are making sure technically things are going well. They're, they're, they're a great team, the stadium community team, doing a tremendous job. And today we're going to have a wonderful time. The young people have been out on the street doing wonderful witnessing and loving people for God as this is the Global Youth Day. Let's praise God. It is the Global Youth Day when the young people of the Seventh-day Adventist Church all over the world are out there taking the love of God. And I want to thank God for these young people who are so brave and committed that they will take the opportunity. They are in their mask and they're keeping their social distances and so on, but they are finding practical ways and means of reaching the people. Uh, thousands of packages are being handed out all over this country and other places. And, you know, we want to thank God that our church has been showing the love of God to people in no mean order in this time of world pandemic. I myself, I've been included in that, and I am so glad uh, since COVID over a year now, I've been out there every week going up and down these communities feeding the blind people who are not able to go out. And I am thankful for the Jamaica Society for the Blind that invited us to participate in this program. And I get to go right in their space and give them a hot meal every week since COVID time. And we have thousands of packages that the church members, all the congregations across East Jamaica Conference where we are, have been going out there and meeting people and feeding people and giving them the love of God in practical ways. And we will continue to do that because that is why we exist. We are, Jesus says, the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. We are the hands and feet of Jesus. And the same work that Jesus used to do is what we are doing now, delivering men and women, boys and girls, from the maladies of sin and the scourge of evil which the devil has introduced. And so today, it's my last opportunity to continue where I left off with you, Stadium Community Church. We are called by God. We are anointed by the Lord. We are equipped elder steward for no other business but to carry the love of God, the word of God, the hope that is in Jesus to men and women who are bewildered and lost and confounded and confused because they don't know what we know. They don't know. You know, I left here last time. I shared with you, let's launch out in the deep. I want to read that text again. It is Luke 5 and verse 5. Luke 5 and verse 5. When God, Jesus told Peter, despite what you've been doing and it's not working, go out in the deep and let down your net for a draught of fish. Simon, verse 5, answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. We have toiled all night. We, the church, we get involved in all sorts of businesses and programs. We are at the front doing social ministry. We have powerful prayer ministry. 
We have community services and welfare work that we do all over. We have some of the best singers in the Adventist church. If you didn't believe it, you come on at 5.30 this, this evening and you're going to hear great, wonderful gospel singing like nowhere else. This is a place you got to be. Call up your friends. Call up your friends. At, at 4 o'clock, we're going to see the young people telling us how God has been working in their program through them, through us. I, I'm a youth too, you know, so I've got to say us. Yes. It's a long time I've been a youth, and I don't give up that part. <laughs> we, we are involved in so many things, but all that we do, we don't do one thing. That is to make ready, to call and make ready a people prepared to meet their God. Because we know that we are living on the knife edge of eternity. We are living in the last days. We are living, we are dwelling in a grand and awful time. In an age on ages telling to be living is sublime. Ark, the waking up of nations, Gog and Magog to the fray, the song says, Hark, what sounded his creation groaning for her latter day. And I say yes. Oh, it won't be long. And that is why we've got to stay on course. We are called to preach the gospel. We are called to lift up Jesus. Jesus says, and I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Romans 10, verse 15, verse 14. And part of 15. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? I put it to you. That the first person who should be on frontline duty. During COVID regime. It's not the doctor or the nurse. As critical as they are. But in this time. The frontline worker. Must be the preacher. The greatest need. The greatest want of the world. Even in the midst of this COVID-19. That is bamboozling the entire world the greatest want of the world is and must be the desire to know the Lord don't get me wrong I'm not saying it's not important for medical science to do its work and to be given critical prominence at this time I am not part of the group that is on this bandwagon of all sorts of gossip about myths about where COVID came from and why it has come. Because I know that in these last days, there will be pestilences. Jesus said that long ago. There will be signs and wonders and things that will mesmerize you in this time. But when you see these things begin to happen... Jesus says, then you must what? Lift up your head and look up and know that your redemption is drawing nigh. And this is not time for preachers to shut up unless you're a false preacher. The Bible says, woe unto the prophets that lead my flock astray. 
But every true prophet of God must at this time, by whatever means, even while obeying the protocols of COVID from the administration of government and working in cooperation with the science team and encouraging people to do what is wise and practical to reduce the impact of this world pandemic. At the same time, we must remind men and women that our hope is in Jesus. There is no other way. The song says there is no satisfaction without salvation. S-A-L-V-A-T-I-O-N. That's the word. And if you ever at time need a preacher, the time is now. Now. And I am calling upon every red-blooded child of God. Adventist and non-Adventist. If you know the Lord, if you know Jesus, put down everything else and make the concentration on Jesus, your main focus. Let nobody fool you. Let nobody yes. fool you. Nevertheless, yes. I will go. Nevertheless, what I will do go. you think? What do you Parable think? Jesus asked Parable in Matthew Jesus 21, asked 28, 21. 32. There was a man who had two was sons. A man who had two sons. Yeah. He went yeah. to the first and said, Son, said, go and son, work today in the vineyard. And the first son said, I will not go. But a little later, he changed his mind and went and worked in the vineyard. Then the father said to the second son the same thing. And he said, I will go. I will. But he did not go. Jesus has a way of asking some very profound, deep, confounding questions when he tells these parables. Which of the two did what his father wanted. You know, there are some people in the church who have a lot of talk. And they will tell you, yeah, you must preach the gospel. You must visit the poor. You should look after those who are needy. And they have nice, eloquent ways of expressing themselves. But you know, I want church members to know that God is not moved by your lyrics. God is not moved by your eloquence. God is not moved by your, even your dress. You know, there are some of us who know how to dress very well. No wonder God allows some of you to have your closet locked, locked up for weeks. And your shoes are rotting because you ain't got nowhere to wear them. <laughs> what a mighty God we serve. Huh? Some of us only know how to dress up and dress down and dress out and dress in and talk and impress. But when it comes to the practical work of God, we are missing. God says, two sons. One says, yes, Lord, I will go. The other one says, no, Father, I can't go. But God is not just interested in your verbal testimony of your willingness. God is checking you out to see as you live your life day by day what your, your works are saying. That's why James in 2.18, James 2.18 says, uh, some of you say, I have faith. I am a man of grace and faith. And I am a Christian. And you have a lot of talk. But James says, show me your faith by your works. Because I'm going to show you my faith. Show me your works. By, uh, your, your, yeah, you say you got faith. Show me your faith by your works. And I will show you my faith by my works. Huh? 
I, as I work, as I do, I am showing you by action. Jesus says, the one who says, I will go and didn't work, does not impress God. As if anybody at all can impress God. <laughs> nevertheless, I will go. The word nevertheless is an interesting word. We don't find people using that word so much in modern English. But there in chapter 5 of Luke, verse 5, that's what Peter said. Lord, I've been doing my stuff. It's not working. You know, I could use this text to preach for an entire day because it's a contrast. It's a text that contrasts what we've been doing with what God wants to do. Many of us have been doing all sorts of things, just like oh, we, we, we try to order our lives according to our education, according to our mathematical calculations, according to our scientific prognostications, according to all the information, the education, all of learning that we have. But the fact is that God does not watch that. Human means... Right now, let me tell you something. Every country that works it, that's worth, worth its salt is trying to find a formula for COVID. And the more they try, is the more confusion. Right now, I pray that the vaccines will have their way and do well. But there are lots of people saying a lot of things. I try to make sure I don't get caught up in that thing, you know. I, I will do what is reasonable and what is practical, uh, but I will not follow all these myths. But I want you to know that people are very confused. Governments right now are at their wit's end and, 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 and wrap, trying to wrap their head about, around what to do. Economies are declining there are problems. People are bamboozled by what's happening. But, but I'm saying what, what is important is that we need to turn to the Lord who will have mercy and abundantly pardon. God says some things are going to happen in the last days that man will be so frightened by it that they will be dying of heart attack. Because of fear and trembling as to what is coming upon the world. And some of it, it is because of our personal bad ways of living. Some of it is because of scientific investigations. And it is important that man tries with his intelligence to investigate and investigate and investigate. But sometimes we get too far. And I want to warn any scientist that is listening to me that you are not the be and the end of all things. There is a God in heaven. There's a greater person. And no matter how brilliant you think you are. You know, I, I, I see some people on YouTube and on the internet, different places. And it comes on my WhatsApp. Somebody sends me. And they're going to tell us about this man who, 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 who has some special information. And they say, they start reading some letters behind his name. How many, how many PhDs? How many different degrees as if that qualifies him with supernatural supernatural knowledge but i want you to know that the fool had said in his heart there is no god that's what the bible says i wouldn't by myself call anybody a fool no i'm too humble for that but but the bible i read the bible the bible says the fool had said in his heart there is no god and whether you're a scientist, a medical doctor of no mean order, or a political leader, the Bible says. Uh, one of these evenings, on Monday, I'm going to talk about the Bible in a serious way. Because some people think this Bible is just a hate book or something. This Monday evening, I want you to come with me. This Monday evening, I'm going to take you some places as it relates to the Bible. I'm making the point that whatever you're doing, if God is, in, is not in it, 
It is empty. Adverb, nonetheless, notwithstanding, nevertheless, it introduces an important change. Jesus told the tax collectors and the prostitutes and everybody listening, Jesus said to them, truly I tell tax collectors and the prostitutes entering the kingdom of God, some of them are going to get there before you church people. Verse 32 of Matthew. We were reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 21. And I'm down at verse 32. And Jesus is saying, some of you church people, sinners that you call sinners, those people you call sinners are going to reach a kingdom before you. John came to you, show you the way of righteousness, verse 32, and you did not believe him. But tax collectors and the prostitutes, some of them believed him. Amen? Church people don't have the answer either, except as it is in the Lord. So I'm saying to my brothers and sisters that during these four weeks, we've got to find time to be engaged in sharing God's word with people. Amen? There are three things we are here to share with people. One is that the grace of God is available to every man. Amen? All through this series, that's what I'm going to preach. Amen? I'm not here to preach law and commandment and to show off adherence to strict to strictures, I'm here to let men and women know that wherever you are, the grace of God hath appeared unto all men. Hallelujah. Teaching us that denying ungodliness, we can live soberly and righteously and be in line with God in this world. No matter what is happening, Nevertheless, we will go and share that. Amen. I'm here to let men and women know that there is a universal appeal that God is making at this time. And God has sent and allowed special circumstances in which we are to awaken our consciousness. That we have a soul to save, a hell to shun, a heaven to gain. Whoever you are, I respect people. I love people. I have manners to everybody. And people who are in certain positions. Because my mama taught me that when I was a little child. And when I was a child, they used to say, train up a child in the way. He should go, and when he's old, he will not what? Depart from it. So I respect you. Please, I'm, I don't want to appear to be dissing anybody. But I want you to know that whoever you are, you're a sinner. Born in sin. Shapen in iniquity. But God loves you. Amen? God loves you with an everlasting love and with loving kindness. Oh, praise God. He's drawing you. And the call of God is universal. That's why we go to everybody. Amen. Sister Demisha, a powerful lady there who is in charge of the technical operations and communications here. She's doing a tremendous job. Pray for her. And the team that is with her. And we, let me say, members of the church and friends who are with me now, everyone who is in this family now is part of the team. Amen? Your job is to send the link to everybody you know. Let's make it viral. Huh? For the grace of God. Has appeared to all men. Teaching us. 
Amen. God has called us not to sit on our laurel in the church. Oh, this is a beautiful church building. Oh, they got beautiful seats in the pew. What are something normally these seats would be filled? Nice soft padded chairs. But no, God says, leave the chairs. Huh? Let the church gathered be the church scattered. Ella Murray, our, our chairman. And let's go out. Take your thumb from generation. Generation Z. Where are the young people? Generation X, Y, Z. God has called thee for a special purpose. Send this call out to everybody. By tomorrow evening, I want to hear that this, this site is crashing. Sister Demisha. Because everybody is online. Amen. The gospel is for everyone. Whether you're tall or short. Whether you're weak or strong. Whether you're poor or otherwise. And the, the third point I'm making is that it is urgent. Amen? So, so let me read a few verses and, and sit down and go. Okay? Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. And verses 8 to 10. First thing I'm saying, grace is prevenient grace. It is there for you before you deserved it. For with the heart, one believes unto righteousness. But, but what does it say? The word is near you, verse 8, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we share, which we preach. That if you confess your, with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Hallelujah. The grace of God is here for those who believe in and confess God. This week, four of my friends died. One was my neighbor for 22 years. And she was her husband's wife for over 60 years. You don't understand that language. She was the wife of her husband for over 60 years. And my heart pained when I went home and I heard that my neighbor, until now I'm praying for them, that God comfort them. And then my friend, Brother Winston McKenzie, I was talking with him two weeks ago, and we were seeing, could we bury his 105-year-old mother before they had the shutdown? And they could not get to make the plans to bury her before the, the, the burial order was given out not to be done. I, I asked my colleagues in the ministry, uh, friends, to tell me, the 13th, uh, the 14th and 15th of March 2021, what is historic about that? And everybody, nobody could get it. Puzzle. What's most biggest historic thing in the history of Jamaica? March 14 and 15, 2021. Next year, they're going to ask you that in class, in history class. If you don't have the knowledge of that, you're going to fail your exam. What happened in Jamaica historically? And nobody had the answer for me in all the groups I put it in. They were not thinking outside of the box. They're thinking of something longer time. I said March 14 and 15, 2021, the first Saturday and Sunday when nobody was buried in Jamaica. <laughs> Write it in your history book. It's phenomenal. Can you imagine? I've never seen in my long life as a young man 
all these years driving from east to west Jamaica a Sunday when there was no funeral. I tell you, my friends, my friend, I, I called him to ask him to remind me of his brother's address and I didn't get him because I wanted to go see them again as they're making preparation to bury their 105-year-old mother. And I didn't get Brother Winston. And I asked another relative. They said, oh, oh, he's got COVID and he's in the hospital. And I quickly got his number and called again. And let me tell you, this is painful. Last year, I buried my brother who had a little stroke, and they said he was getting better. And by the time I looked in New York, he got COVID. And I could not see my brother. I had gone to Israel and the Middle East in 2019 and got sick there. And did, because of that, I went up to see my brother and could not go from Miami to New York because I was ill. And my brother was ill. I did not get to see him. And next thing I knew, COVID. And in three days, he's dead, Ned. COVID is no joke. So Winston, I called Winston three days ago or four days ago. And he, he, he could barely say, oh, I am in the hospital, COVID. And I began to encourage and pray for him. And he repeated, I'm in the hospital, COVID and he, and he couldn't say anymore. And the phone fell from his hand. And I heard after that, he is dead. My heart burns. Oh God, have mercy upon people in this age. And he did not live to bury his 105 year old mother. And then I was in a meeting with the division yesterday morning, day before yesterday morning, Thursday. And somebody called me and said, Pastor, I, you, those packages you have giving out, I need to take to some people. And I want you to also know that um, Brother McKay is very ill. Uh, he's in the hospital and his kidneys. And, 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 and I said, I'm in a meeting. I was in, in a program with the Inter-American Division. And I could not, I said, I will call you back at lunchtime when they break for lunch. At 11 o'clock, because over there is one hour ahead of us. So we are from 8 to 11 o'clock. I, before I could break, the news came that the brother is dead. I was to go out with the young people this morning. You know, I came late because from yesterday, my entire afternoon was with his family. His wife. His four children. One in college, two in high school, one in primary school, nine year old. I went there and when I go, I don't know what to say to them. Jesus, come soon. Even so, Lord Jesus, come soon. Sick and tired. And we're here to let men and women know that the grace of God is available. That the universal call is to everyone. And it's urgent, brothers and sisters. It's urgent. It's no time for playing church. It's no time for putting off Jesus. It's no time for showing off talents. It's serious time. And there are troubles on every hand. There are problems in the land. And nobody really has the answer except the Lord. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him, there is no other. Jesus is the way. You could fly high 
or low. You can run to and fro. You can go here and there. You could take the wings of the morning, but the answer is in God. God and God alone is fit to take the universe, his throne. The poet says, I fled from God. I fled him down the nights and down the days. I fled him down the arches of the years. I, I fled him down the labyrinth ways. Yes, prone to wander. Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Oh, God have mercy. Running from God, as do many people caught up in the world. But God pursues. I'm here. I am here by God's appointment. Because God has chosen this lump of clay to be an agent of pursuit. For you who are running from God. Although aware of God's love for him. In that poem I just read, the speaker continues to run, believing that submitting to God, submitting to God means giving up worldly pleasures, runs from place to place, and even troubles the golden gateway of the stars in his effort to escape his pursuer. He pleads with dawn to be brief so that darkness may come to hide him. He asked the evening to cover him. Hide me from God. But God is pursuing. COVID is the finger of God pursuing running men. Quote me on that. COVID is the finger of God pursuing men and women. Asking us, Adam, where art thou? Gospel coming mission of Jesus tells us that we must go. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The board of the church, its business is to plan work for the church to go. The personal ministries department, all the departments, the youth society, everybody needs to understand that God is in pursuit of us. Jew or Greek, bond or free, Christian or worldly, God pursues us. God is pursuing church people to let them stop faking it and start making it. Amen. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? Verse 14 of Romans. And how shall they believe on him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? I'm a frontliner. Amen. Say amen. Oh, the urgent necessity of the world now is for preachers who will preach the truth, though the heavens fall. Stand up for right, though the heavens fall. Call sin by its right name, though it be unpopular. The, 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 the time calls for men and women of God, of the church, who will be genuine in their living. Oh, my brothers and sisters, how beautiful upon the feet of the, uh, upon the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news. Amen. My time is up, but I want to ask the members of the church to join me in this commitment. Amen? You know, there's a direct, somebody said this, that there is a direct correlation between the rise of sin in the society and the decline in preaching, evangelistic preaching. The more we shut up, the more the devil shows up. Yes. And Ella Stewart, Evangelist Stewart, and Evangelist Richard, and Evangelist uh, Beckford, and Evangelist Brown. She, while I'm here preaching, she's over in Greenwich preaching, my assistant, but she's part of this team also. 
Let me tell us something. We're going to preach until we hear God say preach no more. <laughs> we're going to live it and we're going to preach it and we're going to sing it and we're going to testify it. We're going to act it. And men and women will know that we have no other business but lifting up Jesus in this time of hopelessness. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, this is not time for religious performance. This is the time to show the people who Jesus really is. What he stands for. What he is calling us to. And by God's grace, I'm going. Amen? If you're with me, just raise your hand before God wherever you are now and say, Lord, I will go. I will go. I'm going to live for Jesus. And I will tell men and women that there is hope in Jesus. I'll tell people losing their loved ones to COVID that this is not the end. But there is coming a day when Jesus who died and rose again will bring with him those who are asleep in Jesus. I want to preach that subject one of these evenings and let people know the real truth. People, when they, their loved one dies, they're, they're in confusion. They know what, not what happened. There are people who don't know how to reckon with their personal destiny. I want to share God's good news. And my team here stands with me. Amen. The musical team is just playing a soft music as we contemplate and meditate on the goodness of God. I don't know if our singing evangelist is going to sing for us. Yes. Because we are determined. And wherever you are, I'm going to say two things. One, every Christian, everyone who is named by the name of Jesus must at this time reckon with your personal relationship with God. You've got to get serious. You're either in or you're out. You know, Jesus told the Pharisees one day that some of you, you're just like a stumbling block in the doorway of the church. You're not moving in and you're not moving out. So you're, you're really blocking entrance into God's kingdom oh God forgive me but there are times that my life maybe has been a blockage for somebody have mercy oh God but Lord move me in closer to the cross closer to thee my savior draw me and this ought to be your prayer as a child of God because you have a responsibility to lead men and women to Jesus Christ. And those of you who are listening to me, you right there, my friend, who have not yet known the Lord by personal experience. The Bible says, he that believeth and is baptized, the same shall be saved. And God says, if you call on him, if you confess God, if you right now bow your head and say, Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner. If you say there is nothing wrong with me, I'm all right. You deceive yourself and the truth is not in you. You can't mock God. But if you confess your sins and express belief in God and accept the prevenient Grace of God. God says, I will forgive your sins and heal you. Today I'm going to ask my co-evangelist, Evangelist Stuart, to pray for you the after this song. have lined the narrow street to see this man from Galilee. He's just a carpenter, some say, and he's leading fools astray. Yet 
Many kneel to give him praise And in his eyes they glimpse a power That sees the hearts of all men And he knows his father's mind For he speaks his father's words For he comes in the name of the Lord and there is strength in the name of the Lord there is power in the name of the Lord there is hope in the name of the plans have fallen through and when my strength is nearly gone when there's nothing left to do but just depend on you and the power of your name and as we call on your name, your strength in our weakness to show. We can know the master's plans if we extend the master's hand when we come in the name of the praise the Lord. There is still strength in the name of the Lord. Will you pray with me? Father, we are truly grateful to you one more time because you have sent with your man's servant, Pastor Carl Cunningham, another life-saving message, another reminder, although COVID is happening, although people are dying, although people are becoming sick nevertheless there is still a way of escape we thank you for the opportunity of hope presented 
One more time, O oh Lord, and the people, Lord, have recognized the need for having you as their Lord because everything else is failing. But we are thankful today that you never fail. There is still hope in your name. There is still strength in the name of the Lord. And today we are thankful for the opportunity to make you our Lord. As the people wrestle in their hearts, Holy Ghost, we pray now that you will clear the barriers, break loose the chains that bind some people. Set them free so that they will make you Lord of their lives. We pray in a very special way that your words now will find lodgment in the hearts of your people. We pray now that Christians and non-Christians will resolute to make you their Lord and to live by your precepts and by your principle. We pray that from this series, many persons will be saved for your kingdom. But we pray that even from the message today, somebody will be convicted and convinced to make you their Lord. Right now, somebody who is praying is giving over their heart to you. Right now, Lord, somebody who is online is saying yes to Jesus and no to the enemy. We thank you for your words and thank you for your life-saving grace. One more time, bring us back to your worship service later on tomorrow night and for the rest of the series where we shall learn more from you and be drawn into a relationship with you. We thank you once more again in Jesus' name. Let the people of God say amen, amen, amen. 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 Thank you, Evangelist Stewart. Powerful man of valor, man of God. Amen. Praise God. It's Kent M. Keith who said, People are illogical, unreasonable, and self centered. Love them anyway. If you do good, People will accuse you of selfish ulterior motives. Do good anyway. If you are successful, you will win false friends and true enemies. Succeed anyway. The good you do today will be forgotten tomorrow. Do good anyway. Honesty and frankness may make you vulnerable. Be honest and frank anyway. Doors may seem, and this is Cunningham's section now, to be closing up. Knock on them anyway. COVID world pandemic is wreaking havoc. Nevertheless, I will go. Some people are so distracted, they don't even want to listen. I will go anyway. Living in an age of cynicism and skepticism and relativism and all the isms, nevertheless, I will go. An age of fear and trepidation and turmoil nevertheless i will go jesus is coming soon even so come lord jesus i will go see you later Soon and very soon we are going to see the king. Very soon, we are going to see the king. 
Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. No more dying there, we are going to see the King. No more dying there, we are going to see the King. No more dying there, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. Will there be? Should there be any rivers we must cross? Should there be any mountain we must climb? God will supply all the strength that we need to give us grace till we reach the other side. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. One more time. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 